Welcome back to another tutorial. This is Ashton again from Without Code, taking you through our new interactive scale widget for the Without Code website builder. Now, if any of you are from the Muse world, you may be familiar with our widget from Muse Themes of the same name. What we have with this widget is an ability to scale pretty much any page element up with a hover or a click. It's relatively easy to set up, yet can be applied to literally just about anything. We've got some buttons here on the top of our demo, one with a hover and one with a click, with this cool scaling feature making it a lot more interactive. Now down here we have the same thing with some images as well. Customization of this widget allows for control over the amount of scale, as well as timing settings such as scale time and delay before scale. Now this can be applied to as many elements on your page as desired, and it can also be applied to entire classes of elements site-wide, which is pretty awesome. Let's jump on over to the Without Code website builder, and I'm going to be working with our Burger Mania theme today. Now we can jump into the widgets panel, and we'll scroll down to our advanced section. We'll grab our interactive scale widget and drag it out onto our page. And placement of this widget really isn't important. The effect itself is going to be applied to other elements, so as long as it's on the page somewhere, the effect will still function. So let's jump into the settings panel. This content section here of the panel holds just one setting, and this is where you determine what item or items on your page are to be scaled. Now it's organized as list items where you can easily add more by just clicking add new scale item. And each list item can have its own unique settings, so one instance of this widget on your page should work for all of the scaling that you want to do on your site. You can even place this in the footer or header of your site in order to apply its effect site-wide, kind of like a master page for those from the Muse world. So let's start with this button up here on the top in our header that says book a table. It's a prominent button on the page, and if we want to scale it on hover, we need to target it with our widget that we've already placed on the page. Now again, for any Muse users out there, you may recall a similar concept of attaching elements to a widget using something called a graphic style. We're essentially doing the same thing here, but instead of applying a class via the graphic style name, we're just going to use an ID or a class name that already exists for elements that are on the page. So what we need to do to do this is to take a quick look at the code inside of this button and locate the ID or class for us to plug into the widget. So to do this, simply click on it to open its settings panel. And we can click the gear icon up here. And finally select edit HTML and CSS. Now there's no need to be intimidated or overwhelmed by this. You don't need to be a coder to accomplish this task. You just need to take a look inside and look for the first mention of class. And we can see it here in this first line of code where it says class followed by the equal sign and then quotes. Now there are several different types of classes listed here. We've got this U and a string of numbers, and then a bunch of other things like this DM button link, DM widget, and so on. Now, many of these classes may be applied to other elements on the page, so we need to use the class that's unique to this particular button, and you can spot that one as being this string of numbers here. The site builder here always applies a unique class to everything individually, so we'll just need to highlight and copy this U underscore and the string of numbers. And there we go. That's all we need. Let's jump back to our interactive scale widget settings panel. We'll click into our first list item. And this first field of target element, we see it says a dot and then your element. We'll paste our class from our button, but we're going to leave the dot in front of it. Just like that. The dot is simply there to basically allow the widget to understand what this is. In this case, it's a class. Now we can see here it says see notes below for detail, so let's take a look at that. The two methods you can use to link this widget to an element are by using classes, which we just did, or by using IDs, and we're going to cover IDs in a minute. Two methods to do the exact same thing, but our dot, as we can see here, tells the widget that you're using a class, and the pound sign or hashtag tells the widget you're using an ID. But anyway, since we entered our class already, we can close out of the settings panel, hover over our button, and we can see our scale is already functioning. So what we just did was identify the unique class of a button to make that specific button work with this widget. And you can replicate this method with multiple list items to target as many individual elements on the page as you'd like. But let's say you wanted to target all buttons on the page. The only difference there is you need to find a class that they all share. So let's check out this see the menu button in the discover our burger section. And let's open the HTML editor once again, which you can also do by right clicking and selecting Edit HTML CSS. We can see our unique class for this button is in the same place, but after that we see a class called DM Button Link. 
Now that looks familiar, we saw that on our last button. Now I want to jump out of here and go to this other button, More About Us, and into the HTML. And bam, we see the same class there that all of these buttons share. So let's copy that class. We'll jump back into our interactive scale widget panel. Now in this case, I don't need a new list item. I can just replace the old one since our first button will still be covered under this new class as well. So we'll leave the period there, but we'll paste over everything else. There we go. Let's give the page a preview. Okay, and I can now hover over pretty much any button on this page and our widget is covering them all. And then don't worry, these placeholder widgets that you're seeing here, sometimes they might show up in preview mode, but they will not show up in a publish. So this is pretty slick, and as you can see, pretty quick to set up. Okay, so now I'd like to do a quick walkthrough of a totally different way that you can acquire an element's class or ID, and that's by using your browser's inspector. And this could be a good alternative if you're maybe having a hard time identifying it in the editor for some reason. But before we do that, we are going to need to publish the site so that we can bring it up in our browser as an active website. So I'll just go ahead and click republish. And we'll give it a second there. Okay, and we can now click the link to bring it up in the browser. Okay, perfect. Now what we're going to try to do in this case is we'll scroll down our page a bit, and we'll use the submit button from our contact form. So first we need to open our inspector, and here in Chrome we can do that by going to settings, more tools, and then clicking developer tools. Cool. Now there's a little tool we're going to use here, and we can access it here on the top left of the inspector with this little arrow icon, so let's give that a click. This tool allows us to select and inspect a particular element on the page. So now that we have our tool, we'll give a click to our submit button on this page. And once we do that, we now see a highlighted portion of code in our inspector that we can use to find our class for the submit button. We can see here at the beginning of the highlight an input class name of submit. Pretty simple, so we can copy that or simply remember it. Now let's head back to our without code site editor. We'll open up the widget settings panel once again. And let's add a new list item this time. And we're keeping the period, but we'll type submit for our class name now. Great, let's preview the page once again. Head down to our submit button. And there we go, it's now scaling just like the others. Awesome, thanks for hanging around on this one guys, but I just wanted to make sure to be as thorough as possible on all the various ways that you can use this widget to apply its effects to elements on your page. Now I've talked all about class so far, mostly because they're a bit easier, but in the case that you want an alternative, I do wanna show you how to use the ID method. So for this, I wanna work with the Burger Mania logo up here in the header bar. So same as before, let's right click on it and we'll open the HTML CSS editor. And somewhere near the class, we just have to take a look, but we'll be looking for the ID number, which we can see it right here. So let's highlight this and copy it. And then we'll head back to our widgets panel. We'll make a new scale item. And we're going to want to paste the ID in here, but before we do, let's take a quick look to remind ourselves of what's notated at the bottom. Remember that we're not going to use a dot for the ID, we're using the hashtag. So let's go back up to our target element field, we'll place a hashtag, and then we'll paste our ID number. Great. Now this brings me to another note. If you're making a lot of changes in this widget or adding a bunch of scaled elements, sometimes you might need to give the page a refresh. If you're adding list items and things aren't working properly or things are looking wonky, sometimes a refresh is important with this widget or, or even other widgets. That way you can get a fresh view of the effect without chasing your tail, so to speak, trying to find your error. There we go. So let's jump into preview mode now. Hovering over our logo. And we've got that scaling now too. Awesome. Okay, there's just one more method I want to cover, and that is how you can easily add a class to something in the HTML. So, so far, with both the class and ID methods, we haven't added any code. We've simply grabbed little snippets for the widget's informational purposes. But if you choose to, you can also create your own class name for an element, add it in the code, and then use that in the widget configuration. And this would be useful if perhaps you have certain elements on a page that you would like to scale, but you don't want to make a bunch of scale list items in the widgets panel. This way you can create one scale list item in the widget and then click on any element in the page and simply add that class name. And once you get the hang of it, you might even find this to be a quicker option. Let's scroll down here to where we've got some inner rows that we can work with. 
this last icon here, the milkshake and the text. I want to open the settings for this inner row and we'll open the HTML editor for it. Now what we want to do is look in the same area up here in this first div class. After this DM resp row class, we're going to add a space and we'll type a class name that we can make up. Let's say milkshake and then click update. There, we just added a class to this inner row element. Now let's head back to our widget settings, make a new list item, and our target element is now milkshake, remembering to keep the period because this is a class again. Now while we're here on this last step, let's take a quick look at the scale settings. The scale trigger determines if you want the effect to happen with a hover or a click. Scale amount, of course, determines how much scale will occur. And since we applied this to an entire inner row, let's just drop this down a tad to maybe 1.05. Transition time will set basically the speed of the scale, how much time it takes to complete, essentially. And then we can add a delay in seconds down here. So let's do that. We'll make it, say, 0.2. And then finally, easing style allows you to adjust the behavior of the scale. And what's really great here, like I mentioned earlier, every list item in this widget can have its own unique scale settings. So by placing just one instance of this widget on your site, you can basically control the scale settings for every element on your site. It's pretty awesome. Let's give it a preview. Scroll down to our milkshake in a row. Hover. And with a little delay, as we've set it, we get our whole inner row scaling with our new settings and new class name. Now, in most cases, you probably wouldn't apply this to just a single inner row of the four, as we've done here. You could probably find a class for all of these inner rows and apply the effect to all. But this was just to demonstrate how easy it is to add a class to any pre-existing element. So that's our interactive scale widget. Thanks for sticking with me here. It's a simple concept, but with the intricate setup, it provides a single use widget that serves as basically the motherboard for all scaling effects that you can apply site-wide with full customization control built in. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to give us a shout and support. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll see you next time here at Without Code.